Rowing's good, all right? Let's just get that out there. Of course it is. But the problem with rowing is that it's a learned behavior. It's not a natural movement. I have never seen somebody sit on a machine and just do it right the first time. So if you are trying to use the rowing machine for a tool for your own purposes, make your life better, get healthy, feel better, then stay tuned. We are going to go through a five part series of the absolute fastest and most convenient way to get you started on this machine. Let's get in to number one. What I'm talking about is the catch, and you may not know what that is, nor should you. The catch is the very front of the rowing stroke. It's a moment in time. It's not a pause, frozen space. It's not something that you stop and do. It's something that you pass through, but you do go through it every single stroke. And if your body isn't in the right position, it creates a lot of issues because without hitting the catch appropriately, hitting all of these framed positions correctly, you're not going to be able to apply force, which means you're not going to be able to burn calories, which means it's not going to make sense. And so isolating and getting this catch correct is the first thing that you need to do when you step foot on your machine. Without the catch, you don't have a stroke. So let's focus on what the catch is. I'm gonna take you through it, we're gonna drill it, we're gonna train it, and we're gonna get you better before moving on to part two of this series. This is a five part series, so once you're done with this, you can move on to the second one to make sure that you are building blocks on top of each other until we reach the tip of the pyramid. That's the point of performance, where you're just loving everything that you do. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer, and this is Dark Horse, where you build the life that you want to live, and we just happen to use rowing to help you get there. So coming to your machine, it doesn't really matter what kind of machine you have. All that matters is that you are able to sit, the seat slides, and that you have a handle. The rest we can figure out. Now, establishing the catch position is high priority number one. Without the catch, we don't have a stroke, and so we are putting our efforts and our focus onto this catch position. Now, what is it? Well, it's the front of the stroke. It's the moment in time where you change direction from sliding forward to moving back. Now, it may not seem like a simple change of direction is that critical, but it really is because it's the moment where you organize your body to be able to put effort into the machine. If you were to throw a baseball, it's the moment where you are you know, you take the apple, you feed the giant, you, it's that, right? You have to go through the sequence. And so you're getting it organized correctly so that you can take a great effective stroke. So let's talk through what we need to do. Number one, get your feet adjusted properly. That's, we, let's just start there. Get your foot stretchers adjusted so that the strap is running across the widest part of your foot. Once you're there, you can tighten down the straps. Next, grab the handle. Now on the handle, we wanna hold it nice and wide. Fingers out onto the edge of the handle. Not pinkies falling off, but also not hands coming in towards the center. Get your hands as wide as you can so that the whole hand is on. And then we're going to relax our grip. Think about closing the circuit between your thumb and your forefinger, but not overlapping. I always like to think, if the handle is in your fist, now if you have small hands, you're probably gonna have the handle in the palm of your hand, but if you have, you know, reasonably bigger, <laughs> bigger hands, like I do, I don't know, 6'3", then let the handle sit in your fingers rather than in a closed fist. If I close my fist, you can see my thumb and my forefinger overlap, but if I let them out a little bit, then it sits more in my knuckles. So that's the grip that we're looking for. Next, we organize the body. So here's the checklist that you are going to go through every single time as you're getting started. Just practice, practice, practice this over and over. Hands relaxed, hands wide. Elbows extended, shoulders reach. Do this with me now, so make sure you're on your machine. Then drop your shoulders, so you're not shrugging up high, so drop the shoulders, then engage your lats. Now here's a quick tip how to do that. Imagine, take one arm out, reach. You don't have to imagine, you can literally do this. Take your other arm, grab the meaty tissue underneath your shoulder here, and now with your arm reaching, roll the shoulder down and squeeze down here until this gets tight. That's a tight lat, okay? Now you're gonna take the other arm, do the same thing, roll down and get tight. So now I'm tight in the lats. Now I want my back flat or neutral, so not overextended, but also not rounded. So give me that nice neutral spine. And now I want my hips behind my shoulders, not underneath. Never stack the shoulders on top of the hips. This is one of the worst positions you can get into on the machine. So hips behind the shoulders, that gives my trunk a forward angle of one o'clock. 
Arms extended, hips behind the shoulders, knees tracking underneath the arms, not outside at all times. So elbow, uh, knees underneath the arms, heels flat to start. Don't worry, we will eventually lift the heels, but not as we're learning. And from here, bring the system in as tight as possible without any of those things going wrong. Hang out here. And that's it. This is how we practice the catch. You organize it from top to bottom, and then you hold. Oh, do you hold. And when you're holding the catch position, you're gonna be cursing my, you're not, ha right now you're probably not happy watching this. You're like, Shane, why are we doing this? Well, because if you've never felt what this position feels like to be tight here, well then I could never ask you to try and find it in the middle of a stroke. But being tight in the catch is critical to being able to unleash power into the machine. If your body is loose in this position, how do you think you're gonna be able to get tight to deliver force? You just can't. That's why this position is so critical is that we have to be wound up like a, like a loaded spring ready to just spring into somebody's eye. You're like a small watch spring. That was a terrible analogy. But you're gonna get onto that machine, organize your body, get into a tight catch position, and then practice it. So one more time now, let's walk, so relax. If you haven't already, relax. Now, let's organize the position a little faster on the checklist. We'll get back into the position, and then you're off and on your own, practicing it over and over and over for two minutes at a time. Here we go. Handles nice and wide, elbows extended, shoulders reaching, shoulders down, back neutral, head and neck relaxed hips behind the shoulders, knees under the arms, heels down, and slide forward without breaking position, and hold. And then every 30 seconds or so, see if you can uh, move maybe a quarter inch more, maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch more. And then you're gonna hold for two minutes. Once you're done with that two minutes, take a big long rest. You may shout my name in anger, I am totally okay with that, as long as you come back for the next video. Now remember, if this is your first time here, you're gonna wanna walk through this over and over and over because once you get the catch, all of a sudden new stuff's gonna start to click. You're gonna go, ah, oh, a little light bulb moments, aha moments, left and right, and that's what you need inside every stroke whenever you are practicing. So this catch drill, hypercritical. Don't forget now, from here, you're gonna wanna get into the next one into the series because each in this next five series of videos is going to build on top of each one. They're building blocks. Literally, these videos are meant to be building blocks on top of each other, so show up for the next one. I wanna see you there because once you get past this, it's gonna start to unlock doors for you. You're gonna, you're gonna start to click and everything's gonna start to be more fun. So if this is your first time here, make sure that you subscribe so that you are here for the next one. And in the comments below, I wanna know what you think about the catch, why and what kind of light bulb moments this is giving to you now. And in the next one, we're gonna start to move. We're gonna actually take you from the catch into the next position. Et voila, we're gonna start to have some fun. So coming up next, make sure you check out the five series playlist and and then while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.